What is going on, guys? Look who it is. Your friendly neighborhood HVAC pal, Shannon. Long time no see, fellas. How has everything been going? I hope this video finds you all well. I hope that you all have made it through the hard times and you're back getting ready, getting geared up for summertime. Those no AC calls are going to come pouring in any day now. It's getting hot out there. Everybody's going to need that AC. And you know what we're going to be doing. We're going to be using our meters and our test leads to go out there and diagnose a bunch of these problems. And that's what today's video is going to be about. More in particular, these little caps on the ends of our test leads. The little protective cap. And I'm telling you guys, if I could go back in time and change one thing in my career, I would have started using those dang things a long, long time ago. But we've all got to learn the hard way. We've all got to ground one out, blow the tip off of an expensive test lead. Hopefully you didn't blow open one of the windings on a compressor or a fan motor and mess up a customer's unit. Uh, but it can and it will happen eventually. Any of you that have worked out in the field for any length of time know what I'm talking about. And this is for a lot of you new guys out there. If I could recommend one piece of advice to you just right off the bat when you're getting in the field, it is use the tip cover. Don't go rolling like this. This is what you want to be using right here. So you've got that tiny little tip exposed and you're not going to be shorting anything out out there. So with these caps, you know, most test leads come with those things. But you guys know what happens to them. You lay them on top of the unit and they fall down inside of the unit and you don't feel like pulling the fan off and digging down inside of there and climbing down in the unit to get these things back. So you take off and you leave them or you lay them over on the disconnect. They fall down the flower bed. You can't find them or you forget and you walk off and leave the house and you head on to the next job and you don't have your caps with you and they're gone and you can't replace those. You cannot buy those things. You can't find those anywhere. So you're stuck buying a new set of leads if you want these caps back. Unless you watch Shannon's little video here today because I am going to show you a way to make these things for free. They're not going to cost you a dang dime, guys. And we're going to use some stuff that we've already got here on the van because we definitely want to be using these caps and save ourselves that heartache out there in the field. So what we're going to use here is that right there. A good old bundle, a cheap wire that we should all have on the van. If you don't have a box full of old scrap wire, then you ain't out there working hard enough, guys. Everybody needs a bundle of scrap wires. Now, it's going to take a little bit of playing with. You're going to have to find the right gauge and everything for your test leads. Um, but you can actually even color code them. I found this red wire here and this black wire to be just the exact right diameter. And then all we need to do is just take us a pair of wire strippers. These are my favorites. You go to these things, you will never, ever want to use anything else, guys. These are the little 7-inch wire stripper crimper cutters these are napa it's the carlisle brand can't really focus in on that but i'll try to include a link below you can buy these things usually on sale for about 1995 out at napa auto parts and these are the best daggone things since sliced bread these things do a fantastic job of stripping the cutters are sharp as can be you've got a little cutter down here at the bottom and then there's another little cutter up top You've got a tiny little plier up top there on the tip to pull on stuff. And then you have both crimpers, the one with the dimple and the other one. And they make beautiful crimps. They look like factory crimps. And if you, you know, want to pay 50, 60 bucks for them, you can get the Snap-on brand. These are identical to the Snap-on ones with the red handles. Or you can get the ones with the fancy lime green handles. 
if you're cool like that but hey if you don't have a snap-on truck near you just go to Napa Auto Parts and get some of these so anyway what you want to do is just strip off about a half inch of your sheathing over your wire there you know make it a little longer than what you're going to need because the hardest part of this whole thing is just the experimentation of getting this the right length for your test lead so we're just going to be taking little slivers of this off at a time you can always take away but you can't add back so you know you don't want to cut off big chunks you just do a little tiny sliver and then slip it on there to your test lead try it out if it's still too long take another little sliver off and what we're looking for is something about like that that's all we've got just that little guy there you know get you one of these razor blades works best that way you can make a nice little slice down on that thing get it the length that you want and you're going to end up with a little red one and a little black one and then look what we've got right here shannon's favorite meter here the field piece se 480 that one and the 440 that are the two go-to meters man i love those things but look what we got right here this is a pair of test leads that i found from someplace out in california they sell leads real cheap they were nice silicone wire i love the field piece leads because i refuse to pay the price for fluke leads and they're way too long field piece leads have been my go-to leads forever but field piece leads are just a couple of inches short um, I still love them if I could only use one test lead it would be field piece but these were just a little bit longer and they had these real nice covers but they didn't come with the tip covers but you wouldn't know it because you would think look at that that looks professional and that is my little pieces of wire that I stripped off. Look at that, guys, you can't, that looks factory. I hope you can see that, and that just leaves our little tip exposed. And then these things just slide right off of there with a little bit of effort. They stick on there good, so they're not gonna fall off, but it pretty much takes two hands to get them suckers off there. So I'd have to lay down the phone. But that is what these little pieces turn into and that just slides over that and the easiest way to get those to come on and off a little easier is get you some dielectric grease some guys call it bulb grease and they sell it at all the auto parts stores advance o'reilly it's right up by the cash register you can get a little sample pack just a little old bitty thing it almost looks like a condom or something and you pay 95 cents for it and you've got a little package of dielectric grease it's a little clear grease and if you put just a little tiny dab up onto your probe then these things will slide right on and off and then once you get them on there just spin them around work them back and forth it'll kind of loosen them up a little bit and then you've got yourself a set of free test lead covers and I don't know about you but I think that turned out pretty dang good and that way you're not shorting stuff out when you get back in there and you're trying to take that under load reading on a capacitor you're not going to ground that unprotected test lead from a terminal to the case of the compressor and short something out and blow a winding wide open and blow the tip off your lead and destroy it so that is a way to get those caps for free if you have lost yours or if you have a set of test leads that you really like but they don't have those on there get your old spare bundle of wire out and get to stripping and to slicing and come up with some of these little old things and then you've got that and guys that works out great so like i said if if i could recommend one thing especially to the new guys it is to use those tip covers don't listen to anybody else they're gonna say ah you don't need those man i've been doing this for 30 years and i've never shorted one that's a bunch of baloney he's lying to you we've all done it and it's not any fun especially if you mess up a customer's equipment man you don't want to do something like that 
So you've, you've got a lot more confidence and a greater peace of mind when you're using these, especially you guys like me that work on a lot of heat pumps. When you get into those climates and you areas, you know, down south and stuff, you've got a lot of heat pumps, you're working on them every day you're going to have problems in the electric heater compartment and all that stuff's crammed back in there you're trying to diagnose bad sequencers and stuff and when you've got those tip covers on then you've really got a lot more confidence in what you're doing and you don't have to worry about shorting stuff out you know i, I see a lot of guys especially when you're new we were all there you, you're a little hesitant you're getting your hands in there around all that high voltage that 240 so it is a little scary at first, but you're going to have a lot more confidence taking those readings when you've got these tip covers on there because you know that it is absolutely impossible to short that tiny little tip out on anything. So if you can get that extra little bit of confidence, then that's going to clear your mind so you can diagnose the problem you're working on a lot, a lot better. So definitely want to use these guys. So, anyway guys, it is good to be back out here making another video. It's been a long time, I know that. I'm sorry about that guys, there's just been a lot of stuff going on. Don't want to get into details and bore you with it, but just hasn't been the right time to be making videos right now for me. But a lot of other great channels out there that we can watch. Um, if you guys found this video helpful, or if you have a question for me, leave it in the comments down below there and give the video a thumbs up. That always helps out our videos when you do that. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, go ahead and do that. And guys, I appreciate you watching as always, and I will catch you next time.